Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. In the last video, we set out to Barrows with the goal of finishing the Guthan set because it'd be nice to have for Bandos and Zami and probably some other places that I can't think of. I made it up to over 1,000 Barrows KC and of course the set that we don't have at this point, the one and only set that we didn't complete is the Guthan set, the one that actually matters the most to us. Neither of us can get that Guthan's helm for some reason. I finally started getting a little bit back into Slay last video starting off with the Black Demons task, and I got the Monkey Tail last video to finish off the Demonic Slog, but still only 3 Zenites. And I'm kind of torn between doing Slayer and Barrows at the moment because I really love Slayer, but I know the second I get a Greater Demon task I'm going to want to go to Zami, but I can't go to Zami because we're going to want to get Guthans before going there, so it's like, I may as well just go to Barrows because we're going to have to get it eventually anyways. I don't think I'll stay here as long as last video. I do want to mix it up and actually do Slayer, so we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it if I do get a Greater Demon task. Now before we get started, we have a word from today's sponsor. You may have noticed I've barely been playing RuneScape lately, and that's because I've been having so much fun playing the sponsor of today's video, Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans is set in a fantasy-themed world where you are chief of a village. Starting from nothing, you build up your village from scratch by collecting resources, upgrading your buildings, and training troops. You can set your troops to attack other villages to collect resources, as well as produce them in your own village. As you advance through the game, you can raise your own clan and participate in clan wars to test your power. You can passively let your village grow over time while you're busy doing other stuff, and before you know it, your village will be a powerhouse ready for battle. You can get started building up your village today by downloading the game for free by using the QR code on screen or clicking the link in the description and pinned comment. And thank you so much to Clash of Clans for sponsoring this video. But for now, let's do a little bit of Barrow, starting off with 1006 Barrows KC, and let's hope for that Guthans Helm. Wait, oh, oh, that's it, that's it, yes, oh my gosh, dude, the free. <laughs> yes, oh, there's no way, dude. There's a server update, I swear to God, bro, if this rolls it back, there better not be a rollback, I'm so happy, I'm so freaking happy. <laughs> yes, that's insane, on the double chest too. Well, we'll uh, we'll find out in the morning if that gets rolled back. I am going to open up the collection log, and it's green. Barrows is completed at 1,012 KC. I got all the combat tasks done. I never have to come back there, I don't think. Let's put that sucker on. I don't even know which one was which. Dude, I thought it was the same item at first because they look so similar. That's crazy, like the, the double helm chest. Wow. There we go. Full Guthan set, dad bod, and all. I cannot wait to go to Bandos and Zami, but there's more important stuff to get at Bandos. Please don't be rolled back. Please don't be rolled back. <gasps> it's here, yes. Good morning, by the way. Time for another fun day of playing RuneScape. I'm gonna go back to Slayer now. We'll finish off this Demonics task. And the goal for me right now is to get a DK's task because as you can see, no B ring, no Archer's ring. And both of those would be very, very nice to get. Yes, I got 99 Slayer and max D count without a B ring. I do have the Rex pet though, so there's that. Last kill of the task. And no Zenites. This will be my first time grabbing a new Slayer task since maxing and even since getting 99 Slayer. So it's also my first time getting the chance to have the perk of the Slayer Cape. Oops, it's been a while. Uh, having the perk of the Slayer Cape happen, which will give me the back-to-back -back task, which I don't know how I'd feel about that with Demonics. I guess that'd be good. Even if it's in your inventory, uh, you could still just keep the Slayer Cape or Max Cape in your inventory and you'll still get the chance to get the back-to-back -back task. So let's see what we get. Okay. Wyverns have extra strong stab defense, like much, much higher defense than uh, Slash and Crush, which are the same. So you want to use either Swipe or Pound on the Lance for Wyverns and not Stab like you would normally use in most situations. That is a good feeling, getting a whole Wyvern task done in one trip. Before I get like too much into Slayer, I just want to show the amount of Slayer points I have is about 3,000. So yeah, when I maxed 3,000 Slayer points. I forgot about the Fang too. I, I missed using this thing so much. I love this weapon. It's, it's just, it always hits. I need to block Smoke Devils because I completed the boss besides for the D chain, but that doesn't really count as a Smoke Devil or a Thermi Unique. So I'm going to block this because it has a very high weighting from Duradel. Bro, no, I just blocked them. You can't do that. 
Sire. I have not fought Sire on this account. I didn't fight Sire on my UIM. I didn't fight it on my Hardcore. It has been such a long time since I've done Sire. I mean, I did it in the League, but I don't know if that really counts. But in terms of the main game, I have not fought Sire in like five or six years, probably. So... I'm excited for this, dude. I'm gonna be doing one kill trips at Sire so I can restore spec and everything else and use minimal supplies that way. And I was thinking of using the Desert Amulet 4 to restore everything, but then I remembered I have to teleport to the POH anyways because I use the Fairy Ring to get to Sire, so I'm not gonna use it. Here we are, new music track. I still have these tiles marked from a while ago. Uh, I'm sure my inventory and gear setup is gonna change once I figure out how to optimize it for myself. I, uh, I kind of messed up a bit. I had auto retail on, which kind of uh, yeah, I messed up. But anyways, that is 1kc and the boss has a lot less health than I thought it did originally. That was a much faster fight than I was expecting. I also ran the DPS calcs and it looks like that the arc light would be better DPS than the fang. So we're going to switch over to that. Ooh, okay, with these spawns, I got to make the shift click on them be... Oh, I did a task. Um, or the left click be walk here because I'm not going to attack them unless I'm using a spell on them. But that's going to be extremely useful going back and forth here. Otherwise, you just have to right-click walk here. And it looks like for Sire, my highest DPS with the arc light is going to be if I set it to stab. <sighs> Unlucky. What happened was I was trying to shift right-click those guys because I don't know how to do it by just going into the plugin because I don't see an option in there. But I can't really do that in the middle of the fight, but then I also can't do it when I'm not fighting it. So that's that's what happened. Because I got to make the options be walk here for uh, all those scions and spawns. I think that's the task. The one down, uh, okay, after this kill, probably the task. If I don't die. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, that's so bad. That is terrible. And I don't have any of these. At least there's a fairy ring over here. Respiratory Runner was killing Sire with only having to stun him once. And then the Don't Whip Me is just not getting hit by the tentacles for the fight. Wait, was it like 250k for that first one? I didn't really pay attention to how much... Oh, I just spent like, oh my god, I just spent 500k GP dying twice. That's terrible. Maybe I should use Protect Item Tool. I'm a bit more confident. A couple things I'm going to switch up here. I'm going to use the Durax Body because it has a lot more defense for melee and for range. And then also, I'm just going to camp the Barrow's Gloves instead of using Ferocious Gloves. Because you'll notice, with Ferocious Gloves, I have negative 66 magic accuracy. Whereas with B Gloves, it is minus 44. And it needs to be above negative 65 and by above I mean a lower number because it's negative so that way it's not gonna be a guaranteed splash if I need to heal up with bloods um, I realized I wasn't healing up before every time I tried to use it that was also another cause for why I died before and say hello to my friends super attack potion and dragon battle axe <laughs> not gonna bring the range pot either I was just bringing that because I wanted to get that task done uh, knocking out all the respiratory systems in one go it was a perfect sire 7k scene, and I'm already perfect at this boss. <laughs> Never made a mistake in my life here, I don't know what you're talking about. Because it's been so long since I've done this boss, there's been a lot of changes in the game, so it's time to do a run through of Sire. The first thing is to use a shadow spell on it. You used to actually have to wake up the boss first with an attack and then use a spell, but thankfully that was changed. And the tear of spell determines if it has a 25, 50, 75, or 100% chance of stunning the boss. And then you can start attacking the respiratory systems once it's stunned. You may have noticed I waited a bit before attacking the respiratory systems, and that's because you have to wait for that confirmation message in the chat box that the sire has been disorientated before you can start attacking them. Otherwise, you'll be attacked by those tentacles and you won't really be able to damage the respiratory systems. You'll generally have to restun sire one more time before you finish off all four respiratory systems. And you can see in the bottom left, Runelight has a timer that lets you know how long before Sire becomes active again. You used to have to wait until that timer ran out before you could restun it, but due to a nice change, you can now restun the Sire anytime and make the timer go back up to the full amount. After this first phase, I switch into my melee gear with my Warhammer spec ready and pot up if I need to. You may as well bring the max amount of switches if you're doing one kill trips. I opted for less slash weaker melee switches so I could have better defense, but you'll find what works for you. Sire comes out, I pray melee and piety, I get the Warhammer specs in, and then just stab it down. And there is a chance it will spawn Miasma pools, 
So just be on the lookout for kind of a different animation, which you'll just learn and get used to after doing the boss a bit. Once it's below 200 HP, Sire will step forward to the middle of the room, and I'd recommend marking these two tiles you'll be running back and forth between. And if you go to the east or west of these, then you'll be attacked by the tentacles. I turn on Prey Range and Piety and run back and forth, anticipating the pools being spawned, which I believe is every six ticks, so you'll be able to get one or two attacks in at each spot. I didn't exactly do the best example of running back and forth between the spots this kill, but you get the point. Okay, let's rewind back to when Sire comes out because there's another mechanic to explain, which is when you get Sire below 140 hit points, it'll teleport you to that western tile, and you have to run two tiles back, otherwise you'll get hit unavoidable damage from the explosion up to 97. It happens so fast that by the time you run back, you can pretty much run straight back to the boss and start attacking right away. Sire has a limit where it can only send out 15 spawns, and then once it has those 15 spawns out, it'll stop doing the miasma pools and you'll be able to just stand in one spot to finish off the fight. Unless you kill a spawn, then it'll start sending out the pools again until it reaches 15. I have this clip here to show how you heal up with blood if your HP was getting low, you kind of want to run north and south within the confines of those east and west tiles, or you could run behind the boss too. And when you're using the spell, you'll probably end up killing some of the minions, which is why you want to be running around, because Sire would be doing the miasma pools, and because I think you would take a little bit less damage if you're kind of far away from the minions, since they either melee, or if they're ranging, they only have an attack range of 4. I can get quite a lot of kills per, I don't know if you want to call it trip, or per inventory, or whatever whatever. I really don't need food. It's kind of like a last resort sort of thing. So whenever I need to bank because my inventory is filled with drops from the boss, I'll go to the crafting guild, deposit all this in, grab out a fresh super attack potion, grab a few more sharks, and then head back on in. Those spawns shouldn't stay there that long, that's unfair. Because I know at some point, or actually a lot of times, the spawn's death animation will take extra long right when it's on top of the death pile and it'll look like an unsired and I'll be sad. Which reminds me that's the drop that we're going for from Sire is the unsired. That's like its unique drop. It's one out of a hundred. And then when you turn it in, you have a chance to get a bludgeon piece, which is about 50% chance or any of these other items. And if you get a bludgeon piece, it's not going to be a dupe. You always get them like in order until you finish a bludgeon, then it repeats. My advice, especially for hardcores, but just for anyone is don't log off around this area because if you log back in and someone is fighting the boss and the boss does the explosion attack, I think you can get hit by that. And I swear I saw a clip of a hardcore dying that way. Abyssal Adept for 20kc. The Mind Goblin Talisman, no way. People in the stream chat said that if you're using Dragon Warhammer, the Fang is better if you don't hit any specs, and the arc light is better when you hit at least one Warhammer spec. Even though the Runelite DPS calculator said that arc light is just better without any specs, so I'm assuming maybe the Runelite plugin doesn't take into account the Fang's extra accuracy check for the DPS, maybe? I'm not sure, but as you can see, I tried out the Fang again, and it seemed fine, so I decided I'll just use the Fang for Sire from now on, since it feels close enough to the Arclight DPS, whether or not I hit the specs, and this way I can save Arclight charges for other places like Zami or Serb. I want to replay this part of the last clip again when Sire teleported me for the explosion. There was a pool on that tile which I took damage from. That happens occasionally, but there is a way to avoid that, which is just attacking Sire from the north side. You always get teleported to that same southwest tile, so if I'm just running back and forth on the north side, then there's no chance that a pool is going to be spawned on that teleport tile. And after I go through the teleport attack, I just continue running as normal on the south side. Also, I did remember to switch the Fang to the strength combat style shortly after this because it's a bit more DPS. I'm not going to miss it. Where is it? Strength level 105. I am an Abyssal Veteran at 50kc. Yeah. <gasps> yes! The first unsired! It's beautiful! Oh my gosh, 54kc and it's 1 out of 100. Yay! Let's see what we get. The unsired itself is a new collection log slot, and then there's a chance we might just maybe get another collection log. Nice, nice. Okay, first piece of the bludgeon, first out of three. Nice, that's, that's good, that's good. Damn, oh, wait, Sire actually looks massive, what the hell? Why is Sire so big? Why are you puffing up? Huh? 
don't why you puff now is just like that though. I need to get these law runes out of my inventory because I know I'm going to accidentally click teleport out when I'm trying to stun the sire. I feel like I grow sentimentally attached to items in the game, like this fang for example. When it's, I feel like when it's new, I feel a different connection to it than after it's been used for thousands of boss kills. Like I feel like it's more worn in or something. I don't know how to describe it. I haven't quite yet gotten to the point though of thousands of boss kills with it, but eventually. <gasps> Another unsired. Beautiful. Two, number two in 120kc. Unsired, number two. A jar, that's cool. Cause that's, wait, let me let me check the drop rate for that. Cause I think that's a bit rarer. And it's good to get rare collection log slots out of the way. So the jar is about one in 10. Let's put the jar in the POH and it's beautiful. I'm gonna keep it as the Calphite one though. Cause it fits the desert theme. That is five jars now. So that would kind of make the effective drop rate of the jar be about 1 in 1k if it's like 1 in 10 from the unsired, but the insert itself is 1 in 100. So like unironically actually kind of a nice log slot to get. I don't have too many kills left on task. I only have 16 more to go. So I want to try to knock out these last two combat tasks before the Slayer task is over. First one I'm going to try is Demonic Rebound, which is using Venge on the explosion, which can hit up to 97. So maybe I should have brought uh, like Brew or angler or something but i don't feel like running it back so <laughs> we'll just see what happens i do still have to use shadow spells for the first phase so i got spellbook swap to do that and then yeah, i'll just be on the lunar spellbook to use venge for the explosion hopefully it goes well okay let's get ready for this i should eat up okay nice there's the task cool Cool. I, I thought I'd have to like actually kill the boss, but I don't have to. It just goes automatically as soon as the bench happens. This last task I feel like might be a little bit tricky. Uh, kill the Abyssal Sire without letting any of the Scions mature. What I'm doing though is just using the wiki for these tasks. I think it has like every single combat task with the guide on here for them. So I'm just going to copy this and I'll show you what I'm going to do and we'll see if it works. When Sire spawn Scions, they mature after 12 seconds. So the combat task is basically a DPS check. This took me six tries, so not too bad overall. Although I'll just skip over all the fails and just show you the successful attempt here. During the respiratory phase, Sire can only spawn Scions if it gets unstunned. So just make sure it's stunned the whole time and you'll be good. In phase two, Sire can sometimes spawn one, but just kill it ASAP if that happens but they don't get summoned in bulk this phase anyways. I didn't get any spawns in phase two in this case. So next we move on to phase three and Sire will always spawn a few right when this phase starts and then none again until the last phase after the explosion. The goal is to kill these spawns ASAP with area attacks like barrage or chins. They have no range or mage defense, but I still brought a couple things to help like the ancient scepter and imbued heart. I don't think augury helps, but you know what? Placebo is a powerful thing and it makes me feel powerful. You do have to save your spec for the end of the fight with the crystal halberd. You could maybe use dragon warhammer specs at the start and then have your group Iron Man teammate spec transfer you later on. But with the stats and gear I have, that's completely unnecessary. So the spawns are dead and we're good until the final phase. No rush here. I can eat, pot up, and gather myself together for the final phase after the explosion where I will have exactly three crystal halberd specs to get Sire to zero, otherwise the spawns will mature. Please hit. Yes. Yes, that's the last task for Sire. Look at that. It's green. All the Sire tasks are done. And that is the Sire task complete. 136 of them. Got two Unsires, 88k Slayer XP. And it was a fun time, good learning experience. Can't wait to do it again in the future. Like unironically, I really did like it. Maybe it's because I'm in like the honeymoon phase of the boss and it's my first time doing it in forever. So maybe that's why after a thousand kills, maybe I won't feel the same way. But as of right now, I was having fun with the boss. There's this creature thing here called the Overseer who will make you an Abyssal Bludgeon using all three pieces of the Bludgeon. But if you don't have all three pieces, then the thing will hold onto them for you. Uh, until you finish the bludgeon. I just wanted to show you this though because it's like a way to save bank space or if you're a UIM you can store the bludgeon pieces here 
and you don't have to waste inventory space. However, once you finish the first bludgeon, the overseer will leave, and at that point you won't be able to save bank space for future bludgeon pieces that you get because you'll have to use all three at the same time on the, there's like a book I think that appears. And here is uh, loot from 136 Abyssal Sire. You can see I more than made up the 500k GPA lost from those two deaths at the start, but I'm happy to report I have not died since then. If I did die, I wouldn't have shown it, but I, I didn't. You can trust me, I'm a YouTuber, just press accept. And one more thing I wanna show before I wrap up is my Karamban stack. That's the only AFK activity I've been doing since I maxed, and I don't know how long I'll be doing it for, but I'll just check in here and there for as long as I'm doing it. So here's what it is up to. 41,000. <laughs> Make sure to check out my duo teammate Spook Dogs channel, which is linked below in every video description to check out her half of the progress and see what she's been up to. Uh, with that said, thank you guys very much for watching and hanging out. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.